welcome to Talking Straight. I'm Suresh Kochatan. There is an old English saying which says, those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. A country cannot remain a prisoner of the past, observed a two-judge bench comprising of Justices K. M. Joseph and B. V. Nagaratna of the Supreme Court, while dismissing a public interest litigation seeking to name historical cities which have been named after foreign invaders. The two-judge bench of the Supreme Court did not allow advocate Ashwini Upadhyay to withdraw his petition and went on to make uncalled and unwarranted remarks. Who gave these judges the authority to make such sweeping allegations against the Hindu community, which had suffered for decades at the hands of the Muslim barbarians? The two judges were dead against renaming the historical places, named after the past rulers who had plundered and destroyed the heritage of our country. The two judges were more than willing to give the barbarians their place in history, asking Ashwini Upadhyay as to why he was trying to stoke up the embers of the past. As I said, that quote which was there earlier comes to term here, we need to learn from history. Perhaps these judges don't know that Jews have not forgotten what Hitler did to them, their hapless citizens. Each and every surviving member of Hitler's commanders and the guards who gassed men, women and children at Auschwitz were hunted down and brought to justice at the Nuremberg trails. To ensure that the coming generations will not forget what happened to their ancestors, a Holocaust museum was set up in Israel. Why should we name our roads and cities after these bloodthirsty barbarians of the past? Going by this logic, why were many of our roads, which were named after the British monarchs and rulers and generals, erased and replaced with names of Indian politicians post-independence? The judges, of course, added that the history of any nation cannot haunt the present and the future generation to the point that the succeeding generations will become a prisoners of the past. Wow, what an absurd logic by the judges. Then coming to secularism. No, my lords, the founding fathers of our constitution, including B. R. Ambedkar, had strongly opposed the word secular in the preamble of our constitution, hence it was not adopted. That word was illegally inserted along with the word socialist by a despot called Indira Gandhi by circumventing the parliament. The two judges also confirmed that India has been a Hindu Rashtra and will continue to remain one. I should be thankful to the Chuta bench, especially to Justice Nagaratna, that she agreed that Hinduism is a way of life. Thanks, really a big round of thanks. If fingers are pointed at a particular community, do you want to keep that country on a boil, asked the judges. What are you trying to achieve, the bench asked Ashwini Upadhyay. Actually, if you ask me, my lords, a lot. We don't want our children to be taught that Akbar was great and Rana Pratap was not. The judges also said that the country can't remain a prisoner of the past. Why not? We should ask ourselves. Religious worship has got nothing to do with roads, said Justice Joseph, adding that Emperor Akbar actually aimed to create a harmony between different communities. Looks like Justice Joseph has read history books written by Irfan Habib and Romila Thapar. Akbar was a wolf in a sheep's clothing. That is what we need to realize. This Mughal tyrant was responsible for the biggest Johar in which hundreds of women and girls jumped into the fire than to submit to his lust. And my lords want us to believe that Akbar was great. Absolute piece of crap if you ask me. Hinduism is a way of life because, that, because of that India has assimilated everybody. Oh, that's what the judges said. Because of that we are able to live together. Thank God. Otherwise, I don't know how would we leave. Divide and rule policy of the British brought about schism in the society. Let's not bring that back. Somebody called Mahatma Gandhi actually went and divided this country into two. I hope Justice Nagaratna knows that. If that be the case, my lords, why do we have one set of rules for those who blare out a reminder all through the day there is only one God and that is this? But Hindus cannot play a Hanuman Chalisa from their loudspeakers in a temple. And Justice Joseph even goes on to tell Ashwini Upadhyaya that there is no bigotry in, in Hinduism. Wonderful Justice Joseph. I thought this is not what your cardinals and bishops are saying in India. They have been berating Modiji every day at every possible opportunity. And last week even the churches in the pole bound Meghalaya 
read out an edict asking the faithful to vote against the BJP. Were my lord sleeping then? Ashwini Upadhyay also reminded the judges that Hindus have become a minority in many historical places. In fact, Hindus are a minority in 200 of the 766 districts in the country today. That's a sad fact. He rightly argued as to why history should only start with Ghazni and Ghori. What relationship does Aurangzeb have with India? Good question, Ashwini. I wish the judges had the guts to answer you. They did not. Also, I want to ask our judges as to why our roads and cities are not named after kings and queens of Bharat who fought the Islamic barbarians and kept our country as a Hindu nation. Our history books don't mention about Rani Abakka or Ahom kings. New Delhi is filled with graves of these barbarians who do not belong to Bharat. Why should he allow their names to exist? Sorry, my lords, we are not here ready here to accept your hackneyed reasoning. A class 6 kid has better comprehension about why our history has been whitewashed and presented as a one-sided view. We are a nation that is proud of Chhatrapati Shivaji, the Cholas, the Kakatiya, the Ahom, the Mehwars, the Marthandavarma, just to name a few, the hundreds of kings and queens who we should be justifiably proud of. Our judges need a refresher lesson in history. I want to remind the my lords of the Supreme Court that Bharat has been a country that has Hinduism as its core philosophy for generations. The plunderers of the past have looted and destroyed our country again and again. From the Ram Temple at Ayodhya to the Somnath and the Hampi, we are reminded at how our heritage has been systematically cleansed. Takshashila and Nalanda were burned down and one of the cities is named after the barbarian Bhaktiarpur who destroyed the Nalanda University and the judges don't seem to have any problem with that. Down south, a cannibal called Tipu Sultan plundered many parts of today's Karnataka and Kerala. He and his army did not spare anyone from killing 800 Mandya Brahmins on the Diwali day to Christians in Mangalore who were forced to march all the way to Sri Rangapatna. This Tipu destroyed hundreds of temples in Kerala, killed hundreds of men, women and children who refused to convert. It took a Sardar Patel to rebuild the Somna temple that has been plundered over 16 times. If judges like Joseph and Nagratna had been a Supreme Court judge during those days, they would have ruled against Sardar Patel reasoning, why do you want to remind people about their past? Let them enjoy a Humayun's tomb or Aurangzeb's Muslim in Aurangabad. We should be thankful that the judges of those days were people of impeccable caliber, ones who did not play to the gallery of vote bank politics. The judges of the Supreme Court today seem to be living in a cocoon that keeps them isolated from the reality of today's world. The doors of the Supreme Court are open at any time of the day or night for five-star lawyers who have the connection, the right connection with the judicial officers. The common man has to wait for years to get a hearing. But if you are a Pawan Khera, then the Chief Justice of India will hear your case even before the police could produce you before a magistrate. That is a speed of law for a chosen few. Who has said that everyone is equal before the law must be joking? The law in this country is only for the rich and the powerful. The judges who have been selected by a cozy club of you scratch my back, I will scratch yours collegium system, think that there are some special people who are not accountable to anyone except for themselves. If the law is not fair and equitable to everyone, then the day is not far off when Kap Panchayat will spring up in every village and town in our country. They seem to be a far better option if you ask me. It is time the Supreme Court judges start thinking about all this. Thank you for watching. Jai Hind. Please subscribe to Nationalist Hub English channel for more interesting videos. And don't forget to like and share this video. Nationalist Hub, it's a news revolution.